you had your boyfriends, two different ones, <laughs> encourage you to get into the adult industry in, in different ways. And one of the things that I see from the feedback I get from my listeners is how men cannot comprehend that, you know, women that, that they could possibly be in a relationship with a woman who is also in the adult industry, right? Because there's this sense of like ownership over your, your girlfriend. And I could never be with a woman who like show, even like, you know, doing solo or whatever shows yeah. herself off to other men for their gratification and definitely doesn't have sex with other people. Um, so how was that for you and your relationships? So they were two very different situations. I'll say that first, because the first one, he got me into camming because he wanted me to have more free time, which was great. Um, but he also, we had an open relationship, but, uh, it was less, it was less healthy. Um, he, he kind of wanted me to make a bunch of cam girlfriends so that he could fuck a bunch of cam girls. And I figured that out relatively quickly. So then I was like, oh, well, you're making them uncomfortable. So I'm just going to go to their house instead of them coming over here. So that relationship didn't last very long. Um, but I still very much appreciate him getting me into it. And it, it, for him, I guess he didn't feel possessive over me because he was looking at the big picture of like, but if I share her with the internet, I get to have all these girls accessible to me. Uh, um, the ulterior motive. <laughs> yeah. So that one wasn't as stellar, but, but with Michael, totally different. It was very much, he does porn too. And so he just understood. He was like, no, this is a job and you already shoot content and you already shoot with people. So and I shoot with people and I have a studio. So like, if you want to do porn, let's, let's help you do porn. So that was, that was more of the, the pure motive of you have a dream. I have the means to help you with that dream. <laughs> Let us away. <laughs> okay. That makes so much more sense if he yeah. was already in the adult industry, because yeah, I think unless I you're, that. yeah, unless you're <laughs> in the adult industry, it's really hard to fathom the idea that this is just a job. Was yeah. he a performer? Yeah, he's Michael Masters. He's been in a bunch of movies and he has primalfetish.com. So he's I'm on a lot of those videos and he still shoots like my my bigger projects that I want to complete. I always call him first and I'm like, hey, do you want to make a movie? Um, so that's really awesome. And uh, but I will say um, I've had really good luck with men in the regular sphere because I've been single for about um, a year and a month. Um so far. <laughs> um, and it's my first time being single as an adult and I've been dating and like seeing how all that is. And I haven't run into a single guy that had a problem with it, at least up front. I'm sure I've definitely heard stories of guys being like totally fine at first and then later it's a problem, but I haven't right. gotten to that stage of any new relationship yet. So, but I'll say I've, I tried hinge and I've gone on a few dates from there and I didn't get any pushback. It was just like, Oh, that's really cool. I also live in Las Vegas, so that could be that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. So far, so that's, good. So wait, that's interesting. So wait, what did what kind of reaction did you get when you told them? They just said like, oh, that's cool. I Almost mean, they must nothing. have been somewhat surprised. Almost, Almost nothing. nothing. Almost nothing. Really? I just met. Okay. So I just met my possible future husband on a flight the other day because um, <laughs> we just meshed like this and he's. I finally, I, I told him, I was like, well, here's my social media. And he went oh, and, looked, right. and he was like, no wonder you like wearing your mask. You're, a, you're famous. And I was like, I'm not famous. And then, uh, we talked about, it. I was like, so how do you feel about it? Honestly, I need you to just tell me like, don't sugarcoat it. And he was like, it's a job. And he was like, and I think you're one of the most brave people I've ever met because there's no way in hell I could get naked in front of a hundred people, much less hundreds of thousands of people. So he's extremely supportive. So, I, but yeah, no, um, I dated a guy off hinge and he, he was, uh, working here in town and he's like an online, like announcer for like esports. And he was like, Oh, so we, we kind of have similar jobs. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so far, honestly, not a single, even like a blip, like usually it's like, nothing or, oh, that's cool. How is that? There's always questions. Um, like, yeah, yeah, how course. is that? How'd you get into it? Like, how do you feel about it? Um, right. but at least, at least the men I'm running into have been very woke about not caring at least right now. 
Yeah. I would imagine you might experience something different yeah. once you get like into a closer relationship with them or not. I mean, you yeah. know, I do and know honestly, performers who d- date what we call in the industry civilians just means people who are not in the adult yeah. industry and like their relationships have worked out fine. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of girls that are that are married and, and all that kind of stuff. And people don't think that that's a thing. But I I think the the world is evolving faster than people want to give it credit for sometimes. Um, but the other thing about that is I'm fully prepared. I'm fully prepared to get a negative reaction. And that's OK, because I don't require anyone to sign off on my life. So it's kind of like if if that's not cool for you and that's not what you want in a partner, tell me now and we can just be chill. It's fine. I also do. I mean, I personally very much believe in like the law of attraction because I also too like haven't. I mean, I know I don't perform in front of the camera, but I've never really had issues dating men either where they've like had a problem with what I do for a living. Um, And I think that, you know, I think that you know, if you're in like a, if you're comfortable with yourself, if you're really comfortable yeah. with who you are, I think you tend to attract people who enjoy people who are comfortable with who they are. And, and they tend to be less like possessive yeah. and insecure about what you might do for a living. So you just might have like really good vibes that you're putting out. And I totally agree. I completely agree with that on the law of attraction and everything. I think, I think, um, I have camming to thank for being this confident. I was not this confident before I started camming. I was a very different person. And uh, I suggest camming to anybody who wants to get into the industry because I think being in one-on-one or one on 10,000 contact with people that are gonna be um, purchasing your content and stuff like that is really important. Uh, And getting to know the people that we're performing for. And then in experiencing hate comments and taking it in and going, okay, does this actually need to have any kind of an impact on me? No? Okay, here. Uh, So, you know, it might be a little rough at first to get like negativity, but you learn how to handle it. So over time, I've gone from being a very quiet, shy, unconfident person who didn't know who she was to being whatever the hell I am now. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> isn't isn't it amazing though too how we like internalize those negative comments you can get you know a thousand positive comments and one negative comment and the one that you're gonna remember is the negative comment yeah i i don't know i actively choose to to fight that um i don't and it, it's to the point now where it's kind of like it, it's automatic so if i see a hate comment I immediately think instead of like taking it in and having it be like, oh, that's a thing that they really think about me. I think I wonder what's going on in their day like that, that made them feel like this was a thing that they should send to a stranger. And then I I kind of I try to talk to them. A lot of the time, if you're in my cam room, um, we had a guy come in. I was doing a charity live stream on Christmas and we were raising money uh, for a homeless charity. A new story. It's really cool. Um, and this guy came in and he was like, fuck you and fuck you all. And I, I hate Christmas and I hope, I hope you guys have a terrible day. And I could have taken that and been like, oh, fuck that guy and blocked him easily. But instead I was like, hey, are you doing, are you okay? Like I stopped the show and I was like, hey, are you okay? Do you want to talk about anything? And the whole room, because I've cultivated it this way, joined in and they were like, hey man, it's all good. You can stay here and have a good day with us instead. And he ended up staying and hanging out for hours. And he was like, I'm so sorry that I acted that way. I was feeling really lonely. I am having a really bad Christmas. I'm by myself. And I just lashed out and I shouldn't have done that. So like, I, I, that's how I try to go for it. So it's a very positive. <laughs> I'm very proud of my, my guys too, because they kind of all, they jump in. They're like, hey, you okay? And everything that's- good? That's a great story. That's actually, I've had similar experiences, um, where somebody came in and was like, I think it was once on my YouTube comments, like someone came in and said something really angry and negative about my, um, my guest. And then somebody else responded and it ended up going down this whole like 
you know, and this guy ended up admitting that he was like an incel and a virgin. And he was just like really angry because he like couldn't date women. And then like this, these other people were like talking to him about, um, you know, maybe how we could kind of get over that anger or meet women. And then like in the end, he ended up apologizing. It was really bizarre. Like normally my yeah. comments don't end up going, turning into a conversation, but this one did. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of something I saw on the internet the other day. It was like one of those memes and it, I think it was like attributed to Robin Williams and it probably wasn't him who said that because, you know, the internet is full of memes <laughs> supposedly said by, yeah, supposedly <laughs> said by celebrities that weren't, but it did say, so, and it gave me pause. It said, um, treat everyone with kindness, especially like those who are mean to you because they need it the most, something exactly. like that. And I was yeah. like, that is and so true. You'd never know what people are going through. So anytime somebody's mean to me, I just go like, oh man, you're probably going through something. Cause people that are happy, you know, people that are, that are angry like that, they're, they're not generally like happy overall. They're not like going through life, like whistling Dixie. And then all of a sudden they see you and they're like, you fucking whore. Like all of yeah. a sudden, right, like it's right. probably something happened and they're mad. And so that misplaced, but I, I try to keep it in mind. Like I can't control what anybody else does. I can only control what I do. So they might've come at me sideways, but I, I can respond with care. And if that doesn't go anywhere, that's okay. It's not that much effort for me. You literally just vocalized like one of my <laughs> mantras of life. Like no, no joke. This is something um, I'm in a 12 step program and there's this reading that comes up a lot called acceptance is the answer. And for me, like it's really improved my quality in, of life to recognize the fact that like you cannot change the way people are. You cannot change extenuating circumstances. You cannot change the things that happen to you. You cannot change the things that people say to you. What you can change is how you react to them. That's the only control that we have in our life is how we react to um, situations that we are presented with. And if you can like really internalize that and really recognize that, I feel like it makes all the difference. It does. It so does. Cause I, uh, have struggled with anxiety for uh, my whole life. I got it from my mom and, uh, I I've tried a lot of things. Like I used to have a Xanax prescription. Um, but this ever since I started thinking like this, like I don't need my prescription anymore. I have it. I have panic attacks and stuff like that, but it, it always comes back to like that, that, that like I, I can only control what I can control and there's no point in getting upset about this other thing. I just need to deal with it. So I love that. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Look at Yay. us. We're like, I love how like camming like led us down this, yeah. this line of like <laughs> mental health and 